I'm Leo Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, do me a favor before we get started and uh, hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening from right now, wherever you get your favorite podcast from, whether that's at iTunes and Apple Podcasts or if you're checking us out on Spotify or YouTube. Hit, uh, hit subscribe there because we put out interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at Consequence of Sound and would love to, uh, to keep you up to date on all of those. I'm Kyle Merritt. Today, my guest, you know him as Grasshopper from Mercury Rev. I'll be talking with Sean about Mercury Rev's complete reimagining of Bobby Gentry's The Delta Suite. In fact, they call it Bobby Gentry's The Delta Suite Revisited. The music is completely different from what you know. It's, it's really beautiful, sometimes ethereal, and they have pulled together an amazing cast of vocalists to help them out with this. Nora Jones, Hope Sandoval from uh, Mazzy Star, Carice Van Houten, you know her from Game of Thrones. Marco Price is on here. Phoebe Bridgers, Marissa Nadler, Beth Orton, Lucinda Williams. I mean, it's big. So we'll talk about how the project came together, what it was like working with all this amazing talent, and how they kind of plucked the record from the deep south to, well, it could be your town. We'll also hit on this being the 30th anniversary of Mercury Rev. The project they've got coming up at the uh, Big Ears Festival, performing a live score to Carnival of Souls with another all-star lineup. And we also get to hear a little bit about the progress of their next record, which could be out as early as next year. It's Kyle Meredith with Mercury Rev. Hello. Well, well, let's talk about this. Uh, Bobby Gentry's The Delta Suite Revisited. It's a beautiful, beautiful record. Uh, it's, it absolutely is. Uh, we made it the album of the month here at WFBK over February, and it just sounded fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for that. It's uh, I, You know, it, it seems like it's Bobby Gentry's time because the box set came out last year, and I don't know, if was this timed up at all? I guess what I'm asking is why her and why this album and, and why now? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a coincidence because we, we started doing this maybe like three years ago as an idea, and then we recorded all the music, you know, a couple of years ago. And Jonathan had sang all sort of the guide vocals, and he wanted all these, uh, he wanted, you know, different female singers to sing on it. So we started contacting, you know, people that we were fans of and people we knew and stuff, all the singers. And, uh, yeah, but we, we didn't realize, I mean, that it was coming up to the 50th anniversary of the record, which, which we didn't even kind of realize that that was happening, you know, so then it kind of uh, coincided with it, us finishing it, and uh, it happened to be this anniversary. Amazing timing. I mean, it couldn't have been better timing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. was the idea then uh, w- with getting all those different vocals? I mean, uh, I mean, specifically, you went with all women on this one, and, and why, why was that? Like I, I was trying to get Jonathan because he he sang a bunch of uh, you know, well he sang all of them pretty much as like guide vocals but that he was pretty adamant that uh, he wanted to keep to the spirit of Bobby Gentry and have female singers do them all and to bring that kind of feminine aspect to some of the songs because it really some of the songs that are her songs like Tobacco Road and they're kind of old standards but they get a twist by a female singing it and so. You know, he really wanted, Jonathan wanted that to happen. And um, I think, it, he, you know, he was right with his intuition that uh, it came out great that way. Did, did you know everybody or, or was some of these you were just fans of and reached out? Yeah, I mean, you know, we were fans of Hope Sandoval and we were fans of, of Lucinda and stuff, but we didn't we didn't really know them. And so we just reached out to them. And, and uh, Jesse, who plays with us, who uh, Jesse Chandler, he also plays in Midlake. He he knew uh, Nora Jones, and we were kind of old friends with Leticia from Stereo Lab and Beth Orton. So it was kind of like half and half, you know, half of them we knew, and others we were just fans of. 
I mean, it's, for me, the most surprising one was a. Uh, Carice Van Houten, because of course a lot of us know her from Game of Thrones. I, I wasn't yeah. aware that she had a singing career as well. You know, how how did she yeah. come into the picture for you all? She um, obviously, yeah, she's also a singer in her home country in the Netherlands. And we have worked with a guy who um, produces some of her records, JB Myers. And uh, when we were touring, uh, doing Deserve Song kind of acoustically, he was in our band. Um, playing along with us because he plays he's like a multi-instrumentalist he's great and so uh, because he had produced her records we just like asked her you know out of the blue and she wanted to do it yeah. and that was the amazing thing like all these singers had such a connection to bobby gentry that uh, we didn't know we'd get such a response and then we'd we'd send the song out and we kind of curated it as like a movie and picked which singer would go with which song. Oh, cool. And when, then we'd send them the song and they'd come right back and be like, yes, I want to be involved in this. It's awesome. I love Bobby Gentry and we love your version of the song. And so it worked out. I mean, it's a, it's a hell of a lineup, you know, just these names you're mentioning. It's also a, um, it, worth noting it's a musical detour, too, you know, from the way we know the record in the past. I mean, it, but it doesn't sound yeah. like... It doesn't sound like like music that you just happened on. I mean, it sounds like you were trying to go for something very specific. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to go from the angle of it. of Like, when Bobby Gentry did it, she recorded all... I mean, even though it's about the Delta, she recorded a lot of it in L.A. and with some L.A. musicians and, you know, Nashville musicians and stuff. But then there was these cool, weird string arrangements on it. And, you know, it reminded us of some of, like, the... Leonard Cohen or the Nico, like Chelsea Girls record. And so we kind of wanted to approach it almost in that way and treat the, the orchestrations and stuff. Because, you know, like we're not like blues or country players. And so to, to go that route would have been weird for us. But we love the album so much. And, and it has so much depth. It's, it, it's not just um, country. There's jazz in there and folk. And, and, and like I said, there's almost like psychedelic strings and... And so we uh, we love that part of the record, and it sort of went gravitated towards that, and that's that's like more in our more in our wheelhouse. Because I mean, originally this was as, as you even mentioned too. It's you know a concept album about life in in the deep south in the Delta, and yeah, you know to kind of take it out of that context is interesting. But then again, once you take I don't know sort of popular context, pop context of the era out. You know, her vision of the South during her childhood was was simple moments, and and you know, I think that's you know something that's easy to forget with you know all the noise swirling around and everything. But it it seems like that would be the jumping off point where you can say these little simple moments ideally could have happened anywhere. Yes, like a small town, and you know we had read because we live in the Catskill. We've been in the Catskills since we made Deserter songs, and like and Leave on Helm with a lot of musicians you know, live here and stuff and, and lived here. You know, when I when we met Levon, he was like, I love it here because it's an extension of the Appalachian, the Delta. You know, he said, geologically, that the Delta kind of stretches up all the way down from Mississippi and up to the Appalachians, like up to here as as a range of, of mountains and stuff and, and landscape that developed. And so that was cool when he told us that we felt like this weird, affinity towards that simple you know that's why he's always loved he loved, loved living moving up here from the south as he said it kind of reminded him of that that's it's, it's interesting it's something i would never have considered either maybe you don't have to but for what her record was about i you know it wasn't like a, a political record but it was written about a time that was so steep in the politics of the day you know yeah. and, and i'm sure in some ways i mean it's you know you kind of paint that in, in whatever shade you're looking back on. But there's, I don't know, do you consider, you know, whether there are any parallels to what's going on now when you're doing a record like that? We didn't, I mean, we, we didn't really consciously consider it. But then, as like, as soon as we had, were doing the songs with the different performers and, and people were just commenting of how it's kind of like, because we, we kind of started this in 2014 and then it was going on before. I mean, a lot, a lot of this stuff right. has been happening, but then with what's been happening in the last, like, two years, it's escalated and, and things. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I think it's resonant. It's resonant now, and Bobby Gentry was such a groundbreaking performer because she 
they let her, you know, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird, let her. Right. But she um, produced all her own stuff and, and, and picked the studio musicians and, and wrote the songs. And so she was really steering the ship which um, at that time was like, it was groundbreaking. And so, yeah, I think she's kind of, she's a pioneer in that fashion too. So that was, that was another great thing that we loved about it. Yeah. I mean, it's fair to say that album was completely ahead of its time. It took a lot of people some time to catch up to what she was doing in that. Agreed. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Lucinda Williams and, and that's where uh, things get a little, uh, <laughs> blurred lines there because she does Ode to Billy Joe, which wasn't on that record. I mean, that's it's sort of cheating, right? It's kind of cheating, but you know, the first song, Oklahoma, her bottom band, it's, it's almost the same cadence and uh, it's, it's just the same chords and stuff as Ode to, to Billy Joe. And so we we thought it was kind of a bookend. And also, there's a lot of the, she talks about a lot of the same scenery, the Tallahatchie Bridge, mm-hmm. and which are mentioned in, in the Delta Suite, and it happens in the Delta. And so we kind of, because uh, there was another song on the album, Louisiana Man, which was a cover song that she did on there. And, um, you know, we just kind of, we wanted to do that song because, I don't know, we thought it fit in. And the other reason, if we had done Louisiana Man and Oh to Billy Joe, it wouldn't have fit on vinyl. <laughs> so we had we had to get rid of one of them, and so then we we wanted to do that. And I don't know, we just we thought it made sense. I mean, if you're gonna have someone, by the way, Lucinda, we're talking about <laughs> one of the all time greats right there. Perfect fitting for that. Yes, yeah, she was great. Yeah. We flew out to L.A. and, and recorded it with her. She she had, she had performed that song through the years a lot anyway with her band. So she was like, you know, I know the song inside out, but I love you guys, you know, take on it, your arrangement. So, you know, she nailed it right away because she knew it, yeah. knew it by heart. Now we're huge fans. I've had her on the show several times, and it's a, it's a pleasure every single time. It really is. Yeah, she's great. This all happens to be the 30th anniversary of the band, too, right? 1989? Pretty much, yep. Yeah. Is, does yeah. that, uh, do, I mean, is there anything to go along with that this year that you get, you all are looking at? Not really, because we just, uh, it was the 20th anniversary of Deserters last year, so we did a bunch of stuff and around Europe and um, on the West Coast and stuff. But uh, yeah, we're just, we're recording a new album and stuff now, but we are playing down at, uh, next month we're playing at Big Ears. All right, this is the uh, the Clear Light Ensemble. You're, you're performing uh, with a live score to Carnival of Souls, right? Yes, we're doing that. And we're also playing, you know, like a rock, just a Mercury Rev rock set of songs, too. So we're, we're doing two shows down there. What's the what's the preparation been like for that Carnival of Souls? A wing and a prayer. No, we've done, <laughs> we, we've done it. We, Jonathan and I have done it before, and we do it with different people. Um, it's kind of cool because we have, we have Steve Shelley from Sonic Youth mm-hmm. joining us, and Jim Sklavunas from, from the Bad Seeds playing with us down there, and... So we have Mimi Gazy from Hugo Largo, and we have Ben Neal, who plays this mutant trumpet, and Tim Byrne, who plays sax with Bill Frizzell and a lot of John Zorn and stuff. So it's going to be pretty cool. We, we just kind of will rehearse it a couple times before we do it with everybody. But um, we just kind of we pick a key, and we watch the movie, and we have certain cues, and Jonathan conducts it, oh. and uh, yeah. That's it's a, a pretty cool experience. Yeah, and the special moments of Big Ears. It's uh, one of the coolest, most unique festivals I think I've ever been to. It's I, I joke with, with friends who ask me what that one's like. I said, well, you'll go the whole week hearing music and never hear one chorus, and it's it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't expect to sing along. Uh, so so working on the follow-up, too. I, I mean, I'd love to hear anything about that. Is this, is this early stages, or are you getting further along? Because, it, I mean, not counting... I don't want to dis- discount this record with with the Delta Suite because you know it, it seems like this would be having to like write an entire album from scratch in one way because it's so different than the original. But you know, yeah. like how how much does that set you back from working on the uh, the next album of originals? Well, you know, like I said, we had recorded the music a few years ago for that, but I think it was a cool. You know, it's it's always a, a good experience doing. Songs that were already written, but then songs that were already written, but then you're interpreting them again and, and kind of arranging them because you do, you know, you learn things and and it's 
putting together chords and stuff like you that you might not do. And so I don't know. It just helps with us change and and find different ways of doing things. But so by doing the Bobby Gentry, yeah, we learned a lot, and we're along. We're getting along on recording a new album. Maybe next year it'll come out. I hope. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Well, I'm always looking forward to the new music, so that's it. That's exciting. I mean, you've made us wait a little bit, you know, between records uh, in the past uh, decade or so. So, you know, something a little bit yeah. faster. I'll take that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I had a couple, got a couple little boys now. So, you know, I got a two-year-old and a four-year-old. So that took some time out of uh, your schedule. But hopefully I'll be playing like keyboards in a few years. I do not definitely know how that uh, kind of... Um, changes the uh, the timeline too so well cool man uh Sean, thanks so much for for taking the time to talk and again uh th- this record uh bobby gentry's the delta suite revisited it, it's an absolutely beautiful record i'm so happy you all did it and uh and thanks again for uh for the talk today uh thanks for uh thanks for talking with me it's a great honor thank yeah. you all right man all right bye my thanks to grasshopper from mercury rev bobby gentry's the delta suite revisited Hey, if you haven't already, uh, hit that subscribe button before you get out of here. And again, uh, you can get us anywhere you get your favorite podcasts from. That includes iTunes and uh, Apple Podcasts, Acast or Podchaser, but also YouTube and Spotify. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern, where you can also find some bonus episodes of this series. Consequence of Sound has all of your music and film news needs. You can find me at Twitter at Kyle Meredith and Facebook slash Kyle Meredith. Does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.